writing an equation when given a graph. So the first thing I would suggest that you do is get your notes from my previous videos, which discuss the quadrants on a coordinate plane and also the transformations. So for the coordinate plane, your quadrant works in a way where the graph, I mean, where it goes counter, <laughs> the quadrants go counterclockwise. Okay, now I can talk, which is the opposite of the way that a clock goes. So what you're looking for are the signs that go in each quadrant, which are represented by your X and your Y values. X comes from your X axis, which goes left and right. And Y comes from your Y axis, which goes up and down. Y, the X value always comes first. So to the right, you if you'll notice, I have shown what each one of these variables of an equation, or sometimes it's a function, F of X, You'll see that sometimes um, what each one represents. That's going to help you when you're trying to write out your equation. H and K always represent your vertex. All right, so let's get started here. I personally would go ahead and identify my vertex because that's going to help me to start my equation. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for the point and if you don't see the point, go ahead and make it yourself. And then on the other side, draw your arrow. So what I, what I had to do, if I had my original parent function, which was 0, 0, and since it's a square root, it's like a half of a parabola on its side. And well, that part, we are going to work with that, but let's go ahead and go back to the vertex. What I did is I went from the origin and I went over. You can't really tell on this particular graph because it's counting by twos, but there's a three there. There's also a one here. So I went over to the right three, and then I had to go down two. And going down, that means that you're going to use a negative sign. Going to the right means you're using a positive sign. So I know that this is my vertex. This is extremely helpful because what I would do, if I were you, I would start off writing my equation as y equals, leave some space. Well, you know it's a square root, so go ahead and leave, I mean, create a radical, leave some space and then put x. And now you're either going to, well, it's not even an either. Since you know what your vertex is, just go ahead and put that in. And again, I told you that's your h and your k. The H goes under the radical, the K does not. So whatever your current vertex is showing, that's the signs that you will be using. So you're gonna use a positive three and you're gonna use a negative two. So that part's done. Now you go back and you start from the beginning. You ask yourself, so you really have like five options. You have whether or not it's a vertical reflection over the X axis, you have whether or not it's shrinking or stretching, or another word is for shrink is compressing. Um, you have whether or not it's a horizontal reflection over the y-axis, whether it is a horizontal shift, which means it's going left and right. And finally, if there is a vertical shift and it's going, whether it's going up or down. So we're gonna look to see if our original parent function, the one that I just um, put in blue, did it flip over the x-axis? If it did, it would now be going under instead of over. Is it going under? Nope, it's not. So therefore, I know I don't have to put a negative sign in front of my radical. So then I ask myself, well, I'm just going to skip two because I didn't do any type of stretch or shrink. This is just going to be one. So now I want to know, well, did it do a horizontal reflection over the y-axis. So let's see, this is my y-axis. Did my graph go towards the left now? Well, I see, yes, it did. So if that happens, that means that I am going to have a negative sign in front of my x value. Oops. So technically I'm finished. That's how you write an equation, however, some teachers want you to factor out this negative sign. And I don't mind um, in my class, you can write it either way. You can write it the way I just showed you or this way that I'm about to show you, which is y is equal to, 
the square root of, and if you factor out that negative sign, you have to have parentheses. What's left over is x and now minus three because you factored out that negative sign. And then you go ahead and put the minus two after it. So that's my answer. Either one of those, you don't have to do both, one or the other. Okay, so, and the reason this is helpful for some people is because you're usually taught that your H value changes its sign because right now it's a negative, but you just, I'm saying here that it's a positive. So therefore, if I change the sign, that would be true. It has to be in this form if you're gonna change your sign. If you see the negative here and it's not with parentheses, don't change the sign. So it can confuse some students. So it depends on how your teacher is, has taught you. That's the method that you wanna use. All right, so this next one, I'm gonna start off with the same process. What I'm gonna do is locate my, my vertex. So on this graph, it went over negative one and then up two. So negative one means it's going to the left, one unit, and then positive two means the graph is going up two units. And what does that mean? Again, if I'm starting from my original parent function of y equals square root of x, that's what the graph looks like. And then I'm saying what happened to that graph is it went, it went over to the left, two units, and then it went up two units. That's what I'm saying. So that's where my new point is. So now that I know that information, I can just go ahead and write that negative one under the radical, the plus two is my K. So again, this is my H, this is my K, if I'm looking at my notes. Those notes will come in handy. And now I just go back to see, did the graph flip over the X or reflect? I'm saying flip, but it's the same thing. Did it reflect over the X axis? Well, you have to know that the X axis is the one that's going left and right. Did it? Here, you can't really tell. What I would say is, is it going under? Is your graph going under or is it going over? Because if it's going under, then at some point, yes, it did flip over that x-axis. So therefore, I am going to have a negative sign out front. So my first flip led me to quadrant four, but my graph isn't going that way. It's going towards quadrant three. So therefore, that means maybe I had to flip again, which means, ah, it was a horizontal reflection over the y-axis. And so since this is the y-axis, this graph has now not only went flipped over, I keep saying flip, reflected over the x-axis, it's now reflecting over the y-axis and it's going in that direction. So again, if that were to happen, now I change the sign in front of my x to a negative. So I am actually finished with my, my equation. Hopefully that helped you guys. I know it probably seemed like a lot, especially with this part, because I can see where that will be confusing because you're thinking, well, it didn't go that direction. So why, why am I putting a negative sign? Because it did at some point have to flip over the x-axis. How do I know? Because in order to get to quadrant three, which is where this graph is going, my X has to be a negative and my Y has to be a negative. So at some point, this X has to be an, a negative and this Y has to be a negative. So at some point it reflected. All right, so hopefully that part helped you to understand it better. Let me move this up for those people who still need to take these type of notes. If you don't have these notes, take them because it will help you again with writing your equations.